Scripture's full of references to nature, the, the ant, birds, flowers of the field, and on and on we could go. Each example is used to illustrate God's power and to guide us in our daily lives as we endure the challenges and storms that can create anxiety. The environment around us also gives us reassurance of God's faithful, constant care. Each session is uniquely beautiful, bringing its own individual flavor to our lives. I think I'm like this, winter, quiet reflection, spring, joyful rejuvenation, spring, vigorous growth, autumn, thankful abundance. As spring approached, I noticed the first jasmines blooming. Within the mounds of ugly brown dry twigs, little yellow stars twinkled a message of hope for warmth, awakening from the cold of winter. Soon daffodils and forsythia blossoms joined the chorus of yellow. The bright, cheerful blooms stirred hope for renewed strength and God's shining sunlight warmed my soul. Even greater, though, than the physical joy of hope, I'm reminded of the light God created and of the light he sent into this world. Genesis 1-3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. John 1, 4, and 5, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. Just as God's light, though, was rejected, there's another yellow flower that is not so loved as the others I've named. This flower is one that children love to pick by the fistfuls and run, bringing them to a loved one. Their bright, shining eyes and laughter can't help but bring joy to the recipient. Yes, you know that I'm talking about dandelions, pesky dandelions. When Justin and Jill Hill visited our congregation, Jill presented a lesson to the ladies' class one Wednesday night. She stated that her study of this plant helped her stay connected to God during challenging times. In other words, the study helped her endure. So what is it about this plant, hated by so many, that brings peace to her soul? She shared four symbolic characteristics of the dandelion. First, it grows to cover large areas because it is stubborn and grows deep. Likewise, we must be stubborn in our commitment to grow. Growing with the Lord through study of his word, allowing our spiritual roots to grow deep. As a result, this growth deepens our faith our belief system, our resilience, so that we truly know what we believe. Paul's strong language in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 states, Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Our commitment to grow in the Lord is vital. Not only does the dandelion grow deep, strong roots, but also it nourishes the environment around it. All its parts are beneficial. Its flowers are the first source of food for bees in the spring. Its young leaves can be steamed or used in salads Its roots can be dried and used to make nourishing tea. An internet internet search reveals its possible health benefits to humans. Even when the stem is broken, there's a milky liquid inside its veins that is said to be a good wart remover. When we intentionally search the the word, God provides support and nourishment. Matthew 5, 6 states, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. We know that intentional daily Bible reading, prayer, and even singing bring peace into our hearts and can enable us to minister to people around us. Paul exhorts the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 13, 
<clears throat> be of one mind, live in peace. This signaled the end of his work in Corinth. As sad as that may have been, he left the seeds for continued beginnings with those Christians. That brings me to Jill's third dandelion lesson, create something new out of every end. <clears throat> Excuse me. The dandelion's life cycle teaches us that no matter what cycle of life we're in, it is beautiful and beneficial. Reflect on the beauty of those white, airy puffballs at the end of a stem and at the end of a dandelion's life. We can relive our childhood just by blowing those tiny, seed-bearing tendrils away from the stem, and we may never know where those seeds will germinate. Each cycle of our lives gives us the opportunity to bless others uniquely. God can use our talents and gifts to nourish those around us. Often, his spirit directs us along paths we never dreamed possible. One of my favorite passages is one of David's prayers near the end of his life in Psalm 71, 17, and 18. Since my youth, O oh God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, O oh God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Just as plants die in order to spread their seeds to continue the species, so we must die to ourselves so that those around us are blessed. In that blessing, though, there is one more lesson to learn. Matthew 5, 44, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Among plants that are hated, the dandelion is at or near the top. Think of all the ways we try to get rid of them. We pull, we chop, we poison in an endless cycle. So what can we learn? Jill puts it this, put it this way. Don't let the haters get you down. I would add, don't let the, the critics get you down. Many of us have difficulty handling criticism. We crave acceptance, a sense of belonging. Criticism can signal non-acceptance, judgment, rejection. When we brood and pout about others' rejections of our ideas and efforts, we lose some of our power to endure. This is the exact moment we need to turn to God's word. Evidently, Timothy was struggling with similar circumstances when Paul said, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in love, in faith, and in purity, 1 Timothy 4.12. As we grow our roots deep into God's will, he refines us. Think how the Spirit led Paul to become content and eloquent and driven to live in God's will. Paul endured as we must, as we must. therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, we, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. Jesus endured. The author of Hebrews stated in chapter 12, the latter part of verse 1, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So just as the lowly dandelion demonstrates its tenacious will to grow, flourish, and nourish in its environment, may we do the same in our circumstances to endure the challenges and roadblocks
that come at us from all directions. Jesus endured, Paul endured, so can we. Blessings. <laughs>